What's up everyone, in this Photoshop tutorial, I'm gonna show you a pretty amazing Photoshop feature called Content Aware Fill. Let's say you have an image like this, which is actually a photo of me. Yeah, that's the guy's voice you hear right now. In this image, the background cuts off. It's a pretty plain background, it's a gradient, there's some light, but it's not like a very complex background like a city or anything. If you have a photo like this, it's really easy to fill in more background automatically in Photoshop. To do this, we need to first increase the photo size. We're gonna change the crop. And so I'm gonna grab the crop tool and I'm gonna pull on the edge to give me some more photo. And I'm gonna hold Option or Alt and kind of drag it out from the middle. I want a really wide photo, like that. I'm gonna let go. And then I want a little bit more above, so I'm gonna grab this and pull it up, just like that. Press enter or return on your keyboard, and now you have more space around your photo. So what if I wanna fill all of this space in with this imaginary background that doesn't actually exist? First, I'm gonna select my photo. Hold option, or actually hold command or control on PC and click on your layer thumbnail. It's gonna make a selection of your image. Next, I'm gonna inverse that selection or invert that selection, go to select down to inverse, and we're gonna do shift command I or shift control I. Now one thing about this selection, it goes right up to the edge. If you want a better blend, increase that selection size a little bit. So we're gonna go up to select, down to modify, and expand. From there we're gonna expand it five pixels. I want an overlap of five pixels press OK. Now there's going to be no issue there or any ghost lines or anything like that because this background will actually overlap onto the old photo. Photoshop knows how to blend that in. We've got the selection made. Now we want to fill that selection and let Photoshop decide how the background should look based on all these pixels right here. So we're going to go up to edit down to content aware fill. Now in the content aware fill panel we have the original photo here on the left it's gonna be highlighted in green what Photoshop is looking at and sort of dictating how to fill all the other pixels. So if you have part of a face, it might accidentally put some hair out there. You know, if you have mostly background, it'll take from whatever is highlighted in green and try to apply that to all the empty space that you're filling. Now, if there's no issues, it's not a big deal if let's say some of my hair is in this selection. Photoshop will figure that out and they'll know to ignore that and not just put like, part of a head out here. So it looks like it did a pretty darn good job of detailing out the background and expanding it to the edge of the selection. There's a few settings over here. You can see the sample area and you can make some adjustments to how the sample area appears and the color. Right now it's green, of course. I'm gonna drop that down. You have sampling area options, auto, rectangular, custom. Don't really need to mess with that. You have some fill settings. These you can mess with. The color adaptation, the rotation adaptation, any of these, if you check mark mirror and scale, you might get some different results. For this one, I'm not gonna mess with it too much. It did a pretty decent job, especially on the right hand side. I could always add a little more vignette over here and it'll look just fine. The other thing you can do in the output settings is output to a new layer, the current layer, or even a duplicate layer. In this case, I would just output it to a new layer. I can always merge those layers later. Now, one thing I wanna show you, obviously I can drag these panels in and out. That's not what I wanna show you. If you are having issues where some of the selection is appearing that you don't want, this brush tool here is minus, and then if you hold option, it's a plus. So plus will add more selected area, minus will subtract that selected area. So you could kind of detail out that you don't want any of the face selected when it's trying to figure out what pixels to add to your background. Same thing with the shoulders and stuff. And then Photoshop will automatically kind of load in all that new selection and figure out how to do the background from there. This is looking pretty good. I'm gonna try one thing. And when you click on these options in the fill settings, it'll probably pop up and tell you that unexpected results may occur and that's okay. Really, it's kind of a trial and error process. You know, check mark scale, see if Photoshop can do a better background when you have that resizing for a better match. And you can see here, it says it's good for content with repeating patterns of different sizes or perspectives. We'll see if that works out. Same with mirror, allows the horizontal flipping. So good for content with horizontal symmetry. That might be something that we utilize here. Once Photoshop loads, we'll kind of see how well it replicates that background and expands it out, depending on what we have selected in the fill settings. I'm not sure scale made a whole lot of difference here. I would be curious if mirror does. So I'm gonna uncheck scale and check mirror and then let Photoshop do its work and see if mirroring 
helps it make this a little bit more symmetrical, the right side kind of matching the left side a little bit better. In this case, I think with the mirror selection check marked, it kind of added a little bit more left side to the right side, and the right side's the side that I liked. So I'm gonna uncheck that, and I'm gonna try one more thing. I'm seeing a lot of the lighter color show up in the background. I wonder if I remove some of that area, if we won't see as much of that color or that luminosity show up in the background. So if we undo that, we'll see how that affects what happens over here. Now you can see that when I did that, it doesn't have as good of a blend. So you might want, especially as you get to the edges, to include that so that Photoshop knows how to blend those pieces together. So I'm gonna hold Option, that's Alt on Windows, and I'm just gonna show a little bit more of that segment and see how that affects Photoshop's blend with the rest of the photo. This is starting to look a little bit better. You might notice a dark line right here. So you could keep tweaking this, tweaking your photo, depending on what you have in your image, and as you even just make the smallest of adjustments, Photoshop is gonna completely change how it blends all that background together until you get to something that you're a little bit happier with, and then you can press OK. Now, like I said, it outputs that to a new layer. So you see now, if I unselect or deselect with Command or Control D, I have this top layer and a bottom layer here. And if we hide the top layer, you see the old photo, and same thing, if we hide the photo, you see just the background that it added. So this did a really good job, especially on the right-hand side. You can see how well that's blended in. The left-hand side has a little bit of fragmenting on it, I would say, with the colors and everything. I could probably go in there and really start to try to tweak things for a while to get that to work, but it's also a really, really good starting point. What we could do is add maybe a little bit more vignette to that to help it blend a little bit better. If I were to add a vignette, I'd probably add a new layer, press B for the brush tool, make sure I have a really soft brush, hardness zero, and a larger brush, and I'd probably sample a color, so pressing I for the eyedropper tool and sample this corner right here, and then go back to B for that brush tool and start to paint in a little bit around here, and you can see how it's painting on that layer. We could also change the blending mode for this layer to multiply and see how that affects things. And as we sort of paint in, we start to get a little bit more of a vignette over here. Multiply may not be what we want. We might just want normal. And that's starting to look a lot, lot better. So as you can see, with a few little tweaks to remove some of the color fragmenting that happened here and add a little bit more vignette, we have this awesome expanded background from the original photo. I think the main thing here is to realize that, especially if you have a less complicated, more simplified background, you're not stuck with the size of that photo. Now I could use this as a full photo on my website if I wanted to. Photoshop does a really great job with this content aware fill, and I use this all the time to increase sizing of photos and give me just a little bit more background to work with. If you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments down below. This is a really awesome feature here in Photoshop.